I've got these ugly duckling rocks. I haven't even really cleaned them. And I know that you're supposed to clean everything up really good before you put it in the polisher, but I'm not gonna do that. In fact, I'm kind of interested to see what these rocks will be. If I don't clean them off and don't really know, it's sort of like a surprise, right? So that's what I wanna do. I wanna surprise myself with these ugly duckling rocks and see what, see what they will turn out like. And so I'm not gonna clean them at all. I think they might have a little bit of potential just from what I can see through the dirt. And so we'll see. The other thing that interests me is they're probably a little bit too big for my rock polisher. And so, you know, as long as I'm breaking rules, I might, might as well just break two rules, not just one rule. I have this ugly duckling rock, which I think has a little bit of red in it, maybe a little bit of jasper, but I can't really tell very much. So I'm just gonna throw in the polisher, see what happens. And this, I was healing in some bushes and I found this rock and I don't know what it is. I, I think it might be a little quartzy. I'm gonna see what this does. And then I have some little geodes that I think I'll just throw those in as well and see what those turn out like. Now this I found in Lake Michigan. And again, I don't really know what it is. And I think some of it will undercut pretty bad, but at the same time, I'm, I don't know. And I'm gonna get a surprise. Also, I have a couple of rocks that were somewhat of a disappointment. I thought this one might have been kind of cool, but unfortunately, when I had my friend cut it open, it's not very cool. So I'm gonna throw that in. Maybe it'll be better after it gets polished. And of course, it, it was cut in half. So we'll see what that looks like. And then this geode also, I had that cut in half. And anyway, it was kind of disappointing, but I'm gonna see what it looks like if it's all polished up. I've got ugly ducking rocks, but okay, I do have a token pretty rock because I have pretty rock syndrome and I can't stand it if I don't have at least one pretty rock in every batch that I polish. So stick with me. We'll see what we can do with these ugly duckling rocks and see if they come out really pretty, really nice, really awesome, amazing, stupendous, spectacular. We're gonna get going with this next project. Put some of this grit in. I'm gonna go with two tablespoons. Silicon carbide, step one core, 6090 grit. Looks like I need to go see Jock's Rocks again over in Lawrence, Indiana. Get myself a little bit more grit. Now these, these rocks are ugly. I've got a few extra ones thrown in there. I know exactly what they are, but I'm fixing to be surprised. Water. I'll check these rocks after a couple of days, see how they're doing. I think some of them are kind of going to kind of grind away pretty quickly. This experiment is, okay, can we turn an ugly duckling rock into something nice? Can we turn a sow's ear into a silk purse? Let's find out. These rocks have been in the tumbler for seven days and seven nights. And we're going to see what they look like. This is the mystery rock. It's got all those red chunks in there and also that big black one. It kind of looks like a sinister pudding stone or something. When I first saw it, I thought it might be a chunk of concrete, but nah, it's not that. That's a lot better than when I put it in the tumbler. This is turning out really nice. I mean, it is fossilicious. You know, that is fossil material. Now, what else is in there? That's especially pretty right there. I'm liking that too. <laughs> Remember what that looked like? That geode was pretty much like that. Or a smaller version of this. And that's why I think tumbling small geodes is a great thing to do. Man, I love the colors and I love the contrast and those little eyes right there. That's neat. That almost looks like a cross section between granite and epidote. I don't know if it's unikite or not, but... And then, oh, here's another one of those geodes that got polished. That's pretty too. I love the contrast there. This is a geode that I cut and it looks like this started crumbling apart. So that would be a casualty. But that's looking kind of nice there. I think this has some potential. Okay, this is what I dug up out of my garden. I like that color. I like the yellow staining there, and I like that red. I believe it's just quartz with some mineral staining, but very nice. And here is my pretty rock, because I have pretty rock syndrome. 
I threw one pretty rock into the mix just for the fun of it. A pretty rock in with all the ugly duckling rocks. All right, on to the next stage. We are now ready for step two. And this is medium 220 grit. Four of these. I think sometimes I skimp a little bit on the grit. And so I'm going whole hog this time. And I'm going to put my step two spacers in here. Put a lid on it, Tim. See, context means a lot. And now it's off to the races. All right, seven days and seven nights. We will see what we have here. We have sludgy mess. I know that is just like some quartz, but I like it. Very attractive. For something I just dug up in the garden. And that, it's nice. Geode. Oh, I love the outside of these geodes. Once you get them polished, they look marvelous. Another geode. You know, the quartz and the staining and all makes for something that's just really eye-catching. Here's another one. Mmm, that's luscious there. And here's the ugly conglomerate. It looks like some jasper. Nice little bits of jasper. That black, not sure what that is, but I'm going to stay at it with that thing. Here's that rock that we cut in half and it was kind of a disappointment. Looking better. Looking a lot better. Yeah, it has more potential than what I thought. Here's the other part of that geode. I mean, it's getting eroded out a little bit, but still, I love the creaminess of that. A little bit of unikite, maybe. Beautiful. And this is the pretty rock for the people with pretty rock syndrome. Very nice. Another geode. And another little geode. This looks so western looking reminds me of arizona even though it came from southern indiana another little geode then some of these fossils favocytes or honeycomb coral there's a couple of them here time to move things on to the next stage all right, fellow rock hounds, this is step three, fun and games. First, we're gonna put these spacers in there. Then I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna get drastic, gonna get reckless. I'm gonna put in six tablespoons of this grit. Two, you see it, silicon carbide. Step three, find 600 grit. Okay, boys, spin around and have some fun in there. These rocks have been spinning now for seven days. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. So let's see what they look like. Oh yeah, beautiful. <laughs> that is not concrete. But it is not pretty. <laughs> Conglomerate of some kind. I like this fossil.
Ooh, that's a nice piece of granite right there. That's very nice. This just keeps getting better and better. Geodes looking great. So it's time to send everything on to burnish. Enhance. That's what it means. Enhance. The enhancement stage. We're going on to the enhancement. Oh, 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 oh. Something broke. In the kite. Honeycomb, I think. Not bad at all. Yeah. In this surprise batch, there have been some winners, and I would call this a winner. It looks like a strama or a uh, it doesn't really have the right pattern here for a strama, stromatoporoid or something like that. Maybe, maybe it does. But that's that's a cool rock, I, a fossil. I really like that. It's very fossilicious. And then there's some losers. Okay, this half of a geode. Ah, oh, I like that. The look of that is spectacular, beautiful. But it broke up, so. Not too cool. I actually had both halves in there, but this one survived somewhat. But it's got a lot of rough edges, and eh, it's a loser. This dirt clod turned out to be quite spectacular. I suppose it's just some quartzite, but man, don't you love that green in there? And then that red. And there's like two different colors of green. It's pretty cool. So that's a winner. Another dirt clod that turned out to be, I guess, a conglomerate. There's some red in there. There's some white, little tiny bits of white. That black, some pink. It's a, it's a pretty cool rock. I like it. This pretty thing is just getting prettier and prettier all the time. We've got some nice feldspar in there, some epidote, I suppose. So it's looking good, looking good. One little rough spot there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, I do like these geodes. They are looking good, all right? You take a brown dirt clod and you end up with this beautiful stained quartz, and I, I'd say that's a winner in anybody's book, surely. You know, I like it. That one, that one, that one's pretty. That one really has some nice patterns. It's just got eyes everywhere, so you probably figure this is a uh, geodized calyx. Very nice. And then this one did have a casualty in there, but it's still, it's still pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if it breaks. You know, you got your winners and your losers. Then these other ones here. That gets better and better all the time. It just looked like a black piece of tire when I started out. A little bit of honeycomb coral. Another piece of honeycomb coral. And this beautiful piece of unikite. Okay. Throw this in. Give it a little wash with some borax. And we'll move on. These are, are out. And these are in. In for a penny, in for a pound. Oh, too much. I don't like these chunks. They don't always break up. All right, the burnishing is done and it's time to move on to the polishing phase. Well, these ugly duckling rocks are turning out pretty nice. Back in the drink they go. 
in go the polishing spacers and we're going to go with six tablespoons polish all right it's been eight days eight days a week not 15 like i know some people will put these in the polish stage for 15. they might say eight days a week is not enough to show i care but we're gonna find out and we have things to do so we can't always just be babysitting rocks right we've got a life beyond rocks believe it or not even though we're rock pounds first glance though <laughs> they are not dirt clods anymore The proof though is when they're dry. Next we're gonna go into one more stage of burnishing or enhancing. So we're gonna put in some of these beads and these are, these are brand new. They have no experience whatsoever. And then a tablespoon of borax. Don't let those chunks stay in there. And we're off to the races. For those guys in there, it's gonna be a two hour burnishing phase, enhancing phase. And then we'll take a look. We'll see the proof of the pudding. The well, final burnishing is complete and now we'll get to see the finished product. See how these ugly ducklings turned out. These little geodes were the best by far. These two, also pretty nice. Not wonderful, but pretty nice. But these others, they just didn't work as good as I thought they would. One last little attempt, a little experiment before I set them free. Oh, we've got some seal and enhance that we put on our slate floors. Yeah, when you're a rock hound, you even have slate floors. And if you chip your slate floor just a bit maybe you drop an iron skillet on the floor and it chips a little bit then you just put some of this seal and enhance on there and it's like brand new again so no big deal i'm going to put a little bit of this on what i would consider the uh, not not so pretty rocks and just see what that does well the enhancement did make a little bit of difference but it's sort of like putting lipstick on a pig. The pig might be a very pretty little pig, but it will never be a swan or a peacock. These rocks are pretty cool. However, the geodes were the better rocks to tumble. Anyway, thanks for coming along on this experiment. I definitely took some ugly ducklings and made them pretty nice. Maybe not a swan, but pretty nice.